as we delve into some funny business. Business. This week we're meeting Harry Hill, one of the leading lights of ITV's Saturday Live. Harry's about to embark on a major nationwide tour, so let's go and meet comedy's king of the absurd. And as well as Happy Harry, this week we're talking to comedy's car-coated musician John Shuttleworth and looking at the toppermost TV and video. But first, the power of suggestion says bring on Harry Hill. Who's eyebrow tablets? Is it four a day or 40 a day? <laughs> It's been a cracking year for Harry. As well as starring in Saturday Live, he became the first Brit stand-up to perform on David Letterman's US chat show. And now an eagerly awaited tour. Do you enjoy touring? Uh, well, I enjoy the, the dates, but I don't, who do I look at? You or the camera? Look at me. Okay. I don't enjoy the... Uh, I don't enjoy the gigs, but I enjoy the travelling. <laughs> <laughs> and the hanging round in hotel rooms. Yeah, that's what I like. And the, the little chefs, the... Uh, the uh, roadside cafes. So, and I noticed on uh, your press release you've got uh, Stew for the Cat. Mm. How, how do you pronounce it? Stufa. Stew right. for the Cat, yeah. And um, who is? Well, Stufa is a cat that I met in uh, Nashville when I was over there recently. And he's uh, agreed to, to help out on the tour. He comes on and does two spots in the show. And uh, I think it's, the, it's certainly the first time I've ever worked with a cat. And what is Stufa going to be doing? Uh, well, Stufa does two items. The first item is he does an impression of Barbara Dixon, <laughs> a singer, of course. And also he does a... Um, we do a special thing together where we desensitise someone in the audience to cats. Oh. As you know, a lot of people are frightened of cats. Yeah. An irrational fear that prevents a lot of people from going out. In fact, many people are unable to leave the house unless they first get a friend to sweep the area for cats, put them in a big tin, and then when they get home, they get on the walkie-talkie. I'm home. Release the cats. <laughs> and, uh, so it's just a service I do. It's included in the ticket price, although some people do choose to tip. These cats are research shops, right? Now, back me up on this. With the cats are... Back me up on this. Do you find whenever you go into the cancer research shop, they never actually seem to be doing any cancer research. <laughs> <laughs> It's a couple of old ladies, isn't it? A couple of old ladies. No. <laughs> Selling second-hand clothes. No wonder they haven't found a cure. <laughs> you were the big star on Saturday Live, weren't you? I mean, it really... You mean there was a big star? You, well, you were the one. You were the one. If there was a big star, it was you, Harry. Well, I don't know about that. You're very kind to say that. But don't you think it really sort of opened it up for you? Cause, uh, before that, everybody saw sort of on the comedy circuit, oh, Harry Hill, he's brilliant. And then all of a sudden, lots of other people got to see you. Well, you know, th yeah, I, th you can't underestimate the power of uh, suggestion, no, the power <laughs> of television, because it's, uh, you know, doing five minutes on that show for eight weeks, it's just, it's like having an advert for yourself yeah. in the local paper <laughs> with that show. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I think the thing with that show is it wasn't a an enormously popular show was it so i think it's uh, it's certainly done me a lot of good and uh, i know for, on this tour that we've sold a lot of tickets uh, more tickets than mm. we had say this stage last year so i mean that's why i did it really yeah to sell tickets oh and i thought it was for the creative output well, that as well <laughs> obviously yeah. are you doing any more radio stuff any yeah. more fruit fruit fancy i'm recording it at the moment well, right. well when this goes out i would have been recording it <laughs> two weeks ago but um it goes we just recorded it basically yeah. and it goes out in uh, february or something january february which is a bit of a a time lag it's a shame but uh, so no topical gags in there then well i suppose i don't really do like straightforward <laughs> topical gags but you know we mentioned the sort of people who were in the news a lot you know people like uh, edward heath 
<laughs> you know, the big names, names. Yeah. the people that everyone's talking about. Now, you know the um, electrified fly catching grill, right? You're not familiar with that, aren't you? Hey, the bug zapper, you know what it is? It's, a, it's an electrified fly catching grill, I call it. What happens is the fly flies towards the light, doesn't it? We've all seen them do it, haven't we? We've all seen them, hey? Hmm? It flies, hmm? It flies. Star of whoosh, star of whoosh. It. <laughs> oh, the shit. It flies towards the light, but it hits the electrified fly-catching grill and dies, right? Now, I saw a fly the other day flying towards that light, right? And we've all seen them do it. We've all seen them, eh? <laughs> it flying towards the light at about a centimetre from the grill. It had a heart attack. <laughs> <laughs> but the momentum just... <laughs> just kept it going. It hit the grill, and the electric shock just restarted its little heart. And there'll be more H-Hill after the break. And now, our preview section, Ian's Corner. My name is Ian Coyle, and this week, I feel strangely liberated. I'm very sorry about that. It was bad form, and I apologise. But as Gary and Tony will, I'm sure, back me up on, men do indeed behave badly from time to time. What are we doing wrong? I don't know, mate. Aren't we supposed to blow on it or something? <laughs> oh, what's wrong? Blowing it out. <laughs> Maybe we should buy some sort of lighter fluid. <laughs> Should I blow on it? It looks like it's going out. Now, what we're doing is we're letting the flames build up really quite substantially to, uh, to seal the juices in. Seal them in? I reckon you'll scare the crap out of them. <sighs> Hi. Hi. <sighs> Yeah, and what Tony's doing now is going round and nicely ensuring that the barbecue stays under control. <laughs> well, this week it's all getting a bit saucy. Even the upper hand is fertile ground. Doctor... Have you any idea why I haven't got pregnant yet? We've certainly been trying hard enough, haven't we, Charlie? Oh, please, she doesn't have to know everything. Mr. De Burrows, I realise that talking about such intimate details makes some patients uncomfortable. But keep in mind, this is purely a scientific matter. Uh, you're right, Doctor. We're here in the name of science. <laughs> Good. Now, how often do you have sex? <laughs> Good God, can I leave now? Your problem may involve capacitation, which allows intrusion of the multi-layered halo of cumulus cells that adhere to the surface of the zone of Velocida. Fascinating. Can we have that in plain English? <laughs> Your boys haven't hit their target yet. <laughs> Is there anything we can do to increase our chances? Relax. Don't spend every waking moment thinking about babies. Don't pressure yourselves. <laughs> See, Caroline, I told you, a watch pot never boils, eh? <laughs> but it does require water. <laughs> Being deranged is nothing to be proud of. Ah, uh, well, uh, maybe not where you come from, pal, but see up your street, in case it's like a navy. <laughs> from one naked video to another. Sex is one thing, but there's no substitute for a loving relationship as Mr. and Mrs. Nesbitt testify on their UK golden anniversary. That is That is me. Pure mental. <laughs> Pure mental. Oh, Rob, I'm not pleased. What the doctor? I was beginning to be getting worried, you know. I mean, God forgive me, but I was beginning to think there must be something the matter with him. <laughs> Chris, have I told you I was a heat buyer? I know that. I know that, Rob. But it's getting any letters after your name just to prove it. <laughs> Doctor, what's the name of what he's got so I can tell the family? I'm afraid, Mrs. Nesbitt, your husband is a psychopath. <laughs> Do you hear that, Rob? <laughs> <laughs> a psychopath! Uh, yeah. 
Uh, it's amazing what you can do when you put your mind to it. <laughs> uh, uh, I'll tell you what, you know what I'm trying to... Uh, uh, I think I it's called for a wee celebration. You know what we're going to do? What, hey, uh? if we're, You and I is going to get tanked up, and then we're going to, we're going to stagger him, and then you and me is going to have a barney. Oh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> And then I'm going to tap you for a fiver. You're going to say no. And then I'm going to take you up the outpatient's department and get stitched. <laughs> what do you say to that? Eh? 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 Oh, what can I say, Ra? Uh, yeah. Twenty year married and you're still a romantic. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, this is Jack. Well, there's always room for a Jack the lad. Robin Williams is that man, a uh, boy, um, literally. Come on, easy. This tree has been four years old. I want it to look the same. Okay, Please. So. Hey, Jack, uh, so, so you bought that magazine? Yeah. I buy him all the time. What about Hustler? You get Hustler? If you want it. Swank? Yeah, that and, uh, you know, all, all the grown up stuff that only grown ups can read. Cool. And they don't give you no trouble in buying them? I mean, like, they don't ask for ID? No, oh, I, I just don't shave for a day, and I look like 50. <laughs> so what's up with the way you look? I mean, Miss Marquez says uh, you're our age, but you look like my Uncle Solomon. Uh, he ages faster than us. Is that cool or what? Hey, uh, Jack, you mind if I look at the banner? I guess I fucked. So you really shaved, Jack? Oh, yeah, yeah, I started when I was four. Wow. See you. Cool. And in part two, more Harry Hill and a large dollop of John Shuttleworth. Later on in part two, we'll be talking to John Shuttleworth, but now another helping of Harry Hill. Before you became a stand-up comedian, you were a doctor. Hmm. And it's having a sense of humour is an essential part of being a doctor. Um, I think it's not an essential part. Uh, it's certainly not an essential part of being a doctor, but I think it helps you to get uh, helps you to get by. I think um, yes, otherwise you would be uh, in tears a lot of the time. So, and are you still sort of registered to work as a doctor? <laughs> yeah, I'm still on the register. It's That's an odd thing. Not, I've got this really sore knee. Wait a second. Do you get people doing that coming up to you? Go, oh Harry, can you just take a look at me back? I've got a boil. Uh, yeah, I do, and I normally refer them to. Uh, my small friend is a GP in Chichester, <laughs> who is still doing it. I mean, it's odd, I haven't done it for 40, I've been doing this comedy almost for longer than I was yeah. ever a doctor, but, but you, it's an odd thing, medicine, you, I pay 80 pounds a year and I can stay on the register, you know, I can still practice, <laughs> practice. you know, I think um, you wouldn't want me as your doctor. Were you still working as a doctor when you first started doing your stand-up? Yeah, with my friend, uh, we sort of formed a double act and we tried to get going when I was a medical student, but we never really got anywhere because we sort of muffed about it. Yeah. And uh, so but then when I qualified, I thought, oh, I'd really like to do that. But then I was working such long hours, I couldn't do yeah. any. You know, I thought, well, you'll have to sort of decide, do you want to do this or do you want to be a doctor? So I thought, well, I'll, I'll give me a year, uh, give it, take a year off, right. give my job up for a yeah. year. So that's what I did, really, and, that, and, and I never went back, you know. I did locums. To, for money, yeah. While I was, uh, so I'd be, I'd be, you know, d doctor on call at <laughs> Salisbury Hospital in the car, race down to the comedy store, do me open <laughs> spot. Kim's not in. Oh dear, drive, you know, <laughs> drive back to Salisbury on call. You know, it was very exciting. Dawn and Dean are very good on the ice, aren't they? Hey? You get them outside in the street, all over the place. <laughs> <isn't it? laughs> Tell us about doing David Letterman, because that was all a bit weird, wasn't it? You were meant to do it in England, and then you went, ended up going over mm. to the States and do it. Was it fun? It was great fun. I mean, it was very frustrating, because what happened was, how I got booked for it was that they, they came over here and did a week, and they wanted yeah. an English comic or whatever. So, I mean, I think they too got me, because I was sort of mad, sort of 
British bloke. And, uh, and then I didn't get on the show because it overran. And they'd said to me beforehand, if it overruns, we don't get you on, we'll fly you out to New York. And I thought, fat chance. You know, I thought <laughs> this is not going to happen. Anyway, so sure enough, that was in the summer. And then in September, they said, oh, come over. So I went over in September. Same thing happened again, you know. Oh, it's, God. you know, so that's a, it's a, you know, it's bad enough going and get to, uh, having to go to sort of uh, the South Bank, the LWT <laughs> studios and get bounced, but going over to, to New York. Yeah. And then the same thing happened again in February. And then in, yeah, <laughs> so by this time I'm sort of, but then in May I went over and I just kind of assumed I wouldn't get on really. I just thought <laughs> this is just, here we Last go trip again. To New York, yeah. And so I was actually quite relaxed about the whole thing. And, um, and then there I was, suddenly, here he is. You know, Paul Shea from the band playing me on. And, uh, and it was great fun, you know, I mean, it was a real thrill, you know, particularly because having sort of yeah, tried, time, yeah. yeah, you know, it was um, a double whammy and uh, I mean, I'm a real fan of his show. <laughs> Get those buses out, Butler. <laughs> <laughs> Former security guard John Shuttleworth is about to take the pop world by storm. He's releasing a new single called Why Reg and he's off to do a nationwide tour to promote it. Let's meet the man who could just have the Christmas number one. John Shuttleworth, the self-confessed, versatile singer-songwriter from Sheffield, is the creation of actor-comedian Graham Fellows. And when I met Fellows, the 30-something performer was totally in character as his 50-something alter ego, Shuttleworth. John Shuttleworth, or should I say Mr Shuttleworth, welcome to Funny Business. Can I call you John? No. All right, then, yeah, Mr Shuttleworth. You can, John. Right, we can let go now. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right, now, you're here to talk, tell us all about your new single. Single? Single. Yes, it's... Uh, coming out, you know. And it's called? It's called Wire Edge. And why is it called Wire Edge? Well, it's very clever. Uh, you know, because it, it, well, I, I'll have to sing the lyric, really. Can I give you a little sneak preview? Go on, no, give it a little taste. I've got an Austin ambassador, Wire Edge, Wire Edge, Wire Edge. My Austin ambassador, Wire Edge, it's a car that I repair. My Austin ambassador, Wire Edge, Wire Edge. Why, Reg? Don't keep asking me why, Reg. It just happens to be that you. <laughs> That's what everyone's going to be singing this Christmas time. What's on the B side? That's what I want to know. Is it well, maybe a classic? It's uh, <coughs> it's not a B side because uh, they don't have them anymore. Did you know that? Well, um, well, uh, track two on the CD. That's right. It's track two. And there's four <laughs> tracks. Uh, oh. Why, Reg? Is, is the master track, the main one. Right. Um, and then there's. Uh, you're like Manchester. Uh, you've got strange ways. <laughs> you see. Yeah. So another very clever lyric. And then there's incident on the snake pass, of course. Oh yes. Yeah. Uh, which recalls the uh, occasion when uh, I crashed with an articulated lorry on the snake pass. That's the title. And a Ford Anglia at the time, Joe Joe. Right. But now, of course, I've got uh, Wire Edge. An Austin Ambassador oh, oh. Wire Edge. That's right. <laughs> so what's the fourth track? Oh, I caught me yeah. out of that, didn't you? Keep it up. Um, it's called the Foot Pump song, Joe. And uh, it's self-explanatory. It's a song about a foot pump. My favourite is Up and Down Like a Bride's Nighty. Yeah. I love that. That is my favourite one. Well. But you're not going to do that, are you? No? <laughs> uh, I can give it a little snatch of it. If, uh, I, I do like if, that one. If, just a little bit. All right. But I'll be singing it for days now. Will you? Yeah. All right. Is that all right, Cam? Oof, it's gone. <laughs> Cam was in the corner, but he's... Got uh, for the show, girl. You'll have to get a cappuccino. That's Camp a new Camp one, isn't it? Uh, loving frothy chocolate <laughs> droppings. Do you like that one, Joe? I or do. Or do you prefer I the filter coffee? I, I like cappuccino because I like the froth. Cappuccino? Cappuccino is how you say it. Is it? Maybe in Sheffield should... it's different. Maybe well, it's cappuccino, Camp is it? in Sheffield. Is it uh, taramus latte? <laughs> is it? That's the pink stuff, isn't it? It's just That's, come in there. Yeah. yeah. Fish eggs, isn't it? Or something? Is fish, it? Isn't yeah. Fish bits. Lovely, though, isn't it? It's a Bombay mix as well, isn't it? Which is freely available it in is, garages. Yeah. Everywhere. Yeah. It's a very exciting time for uh, food in Britain, don't you think? <laughs> it is, yeah. Do you know what I mean, though? It's easy to scoff, but, I mean, oh, there's a lot of uh, new things coming in. There is. There is. Well, all the time. Hang on. 48. <laughs> um, oh, nice, it's a... Oh, that's a good one. That's a yeah. it's a bit, Vegas lounge act. Uh, it's a bit that's cheeky, this one. Uh, it is. It's Joe Joe's right. It's very rude. But it's after the watershed. And yeah. It's a fun track. If it's too blue, Jojo, what I suggest is we just uh, 
stop and think of something else to do. Okay. You know what I mean? It's not that important. I don't think it'll it? offend too many people. I think it'll be okay. All right. There we go. Oof. <laughs> I'm up and down like a bright night. Oof, up and down and I don't know why. I'm happy and then I'm blue. So blue. So blue. Everybody. I'm up and down like a bride's night. Up and down and it's most unlike me. Oh, maybe <laughs> it has happened to you. It probably has. Tell us about your TV series. It's called 500 Bus Stops. It is. And is that what you've done? Gone around 500 bus stops? Well, it was, it, that simple? it was roughly 500. I mean, the tragedy is, we were supposed to do it in, in my car. Because <laughs> it's a rock tour, you see. Oh, and it's, right. a, it's a rockumentary, which my agent, Ken Worthington, is filming on his camcorder. Went, Oof. And the camcorder. <laughs> yeah, it was about 500, you know. Yeah, my car broke down. Right. Um, I can't tell you too much because it'll spoil the enjoyment when it comes mm. out, out on the telly. It's coming out on BBC too. Oh, that's very highbrow. Is it a highbrow show? No. You know, <laughs> it should be on. Uh, after uh, Strike It Lucky, something like that. <laughs> I want to be on ITV. And, well, uh, you will be soon. Yeah, and I want to be on uh, Radio Sheffield, or Hospital Radio, something like that. <laughs> You're very popular with the rock and roll fraternity. I know, and, and that angers me. Do you know does it? Yeah, well, no, it doesn't touch yeah, Well, you like your audience to have nice press suits and things. Um, yeah. And they don't, do they, in the gym? No, they all wear, like you, dressed in dark colours, you know. I mean, it's summertime, it should be in pastel shades. What's the matter with it's you? It's autumn. Oh, there should be no tunnel shades. <laughs> you're not you're like uh, Bazili Bub, aren't you? It's like the devil. <laughs> you supported Blur, didn't you? Uh, I, did, I did. I did. What miserable was that like? experience it was. was it? Well, it was because it was raining, oh, and yeah. uh, I couldn't. My hands were skidding all over the keys, you know. But were you not covered over? No, I wasn't. I wasn't. Because all the other bands were. Yes, they were, weren't they? <laughs> but I wasn't for some reason. They withdrew, withdrew oh, the the, the awnings, you know. Yeah. No, I, I think it was, it's an angle, you know, and it was coming oh. down. But. Uh, I thought all the young people would be punching the air, you know, all that. They weren't looking very miserable. Really? Um, well, I thought they'd be happy because they'd be on the love drug. Hey, you know, yeah. I thought that. And, uh, but no, um, well, they might have been, I don't know that. But I think uh, they were missing the parents, Jojo, you know, because a lot of them were away from home for the first time. Yeah. Now you make up a to Cleo or a Mondeo, marvel at the Montego. Fine, but not me, no, my Austin ambassador. Why, Reg? Why, Reg? Come see her. Why, why Reg? Reg? Don't keep asking me why. why Reg? Reg, it just happens to be that year. Lovely. <laughs> oh, rough. Come on. I'd even say no to a Rolls with the chauffeur, a brand new Toyota, a Skoda. <laughs> Give over. Because, <laughs> you know, more than happy with the uh, current vehicle. Oh, just the food. No idea. Man, I'm asking the master, but why, Reg? Why, Reg? Why, Reg? Don't keep asking me why, Reg. It just happens to go flustered. Last time, I'm asking the master, but why, Reg? Why, Reg? Why, Reg? Why, Reg? Why, Reg? Don't keep asking me why, Reg. It just happens to be that year. It just happens to be that year. Your no, turn. No, it just happens to be that year. Oh, I can't get a laugh on it. Look out! Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much, that's fantastic. Well, that's all the funny business for tonight, but join us next week when we'll have more top players from the world of comedy. Yes! Look out, here comes trouble. When there is no tomorrow for... Bill Coates, I thought that was you. And you are trapped in a time war. You like your guys with the prominent uh, upper teeth? No. Relive the same day over and over and over and in Groundhog Day. That's for making me care about you.
with Andy McDowell and Bill Murray. The Wednesday movie premiere at 8 on ITV.